After finding out he was losing in Wisconsin, Donald Trump planned a desperate campaign event only to wreck his chances in the state even further by slurring his way through another shockingly terrible swing state performance. Before we dive in, here is the latest election data from Bloomberg and Morning Consult's latest poll, which has Trump losing to Harris by three points in Wisconsin in a state that he lost to Biden in 2020 and clearly needs to make up ground in. Although after a piss poor performance like the one you're about to hear, I'd say his chances of carrying the Badger state have only gotten slimmer. So to kick things off, here is a MAGA congressman who had to fill time on the stage as Trump showed up more than 30 minutes late where he goes on to describe Trump as the strongest man he's ever met. You're going to see the one man who has enough strength and courage of conviction to stand up to everyone, up to and including being shot in the head for us. Okay, he wasn't shot in the head, he was allegedly skimmed on the ear, which by the way healed remarkably quicker than most standard bruises. And sorry, but are you talking about Donald Trump who won't stand up to Vladimir Putin and is too afraid to debate Kamala Harris? Alright, so fast forwarding through the right-wing strongman propaganda, the weakest man who ever lived, Donald Trump finally arrived to his own campaign event and immediately began accusing all migrants of being murderers and cold-blooded killers. They make our criminals look like babies. These are stone-cold killers. They'll walk into your kitchen, they'll cut your throat. There's that joy and optimism you only can get at a Trump rally. By the way, Donald Trump has zero evidence of this, and he himself is a violent criminal with 91 felony charges and 34 convictions under his belt, who then goes on to claim we have the greatest terrorists in the world currently in our country. They're terrorists. They're terrorists. They're terrorists at the highest level. We have the, the, some of the greatest terrorists in the world in our country right now. We have no idea where they are. I think we know where one of them is, and he's currently holding a rally in Wisconsin after launching an insurrection and violently trying to overthrow our government four years ago. Don't know how that's even possible, but anyhow, gaslighting and fear-mongering is all Donald has left in his arsenal. So is name-calling. Here he goes on to call Biden and Harris mentally impaired and mentally disabled in a vile that demonstrates yet again how utterly unfit for office he is. Joe Biden became mentally impaired. Kamala was born that way. And if you think about it, only a mentally disabled person could have allowed this to happen to our country. Anybody would know this. Not surprising rhetoric coming from the man who mocked a disabled reporter in 2016. So calling his highly qualified, highly successful, more competent opponent with a superior economic track record than him mentally impaired is not how I would go about trying to flip undecided voters in Wisconsin. And speaking of mentally impaired, here is Trump mispronouncing Minneapolis. He was arrested and released in the sanctuary city of of Minneapolis. So after demonstrating that he is the one with problems in the cognitive department, he shifted gears and vowed to prosecute the people in his second term who cheat in the 2024 election while his party is currently trying to suppress the vote and change election rules in several states. Uh, we're going to prosecute people that cheat on this election. And if we can, we'll go back to the last one, too. Finally, Trump's co-conspirators in Congress will be held criminally accountable for trying to cheat in our last election by launching a deadly coup. Just kidding, that was Donald Trump reaffirming his promise to be a dictator on day one of his presidency. And apparently, a racist dictator. Here he goes on to, yet again, falsely claim that migrants are taking, quote-unquote, the black population's jobs. I saw that. It's also the fact that they're taking all of our black population's jobs. For the last time, Donald, we do not assign jobs by race in this country, and the last time I checked, it was you and your father who were making life worse for black Americans when you guys evicted them out of your apartments during your time as a corrupt real estate slumlord. Speaking of past events, Trump is still fuming about the past debate he had with Kamala Harris as he tries to convince the crowd that he didn't fall into her trap during their debate and proceeds to call reporters stupid for accusing him of falling into her trap. They go, oh, he's fallen into a trap. 
because he's but you ever see that whenever i criticize they say all the the stupid people the anchors back there no they say he fell into a trap her trap she can't sit a mental trap. Oh, but she did set a mental trap and you fell into it. She correctly called you out for having small crowds with bored patrons who leave your rallies early and you blew a gasket, then proceeded to ramble about dogs and cats where you'd eventually lose the debate so badly that you pulled out of all future ones. In fact, he's so rattled by the debate that he can't even put together a coherent thought on one of his favorite topics, guns. Here he goes on to accuse migrants of pouring into the the country with not AK-47s, but MK-47s. Occupying the town with MK-47s. I know that gun very well. I got to know it very well. That's AK-47, Donald. You know, the firearms used in every school shooting because you and your party refuse to pass gun safety laws due to your allegiance and funding your campaign receives from the NRA. At least get the name right. Then, to deflect from his own incompetence, Donald Trump goes on to label Kamala Harris as incompetent while also calling her a Marxist. She's incompetent and a bad person. But she's incompetent, grossly incompetent. She's a Marxist. You know, Trump's new tone sure sounds a lot like the old one. P.S. If Marxism gets us stock market highs, lower inflation, record job growth, record low unemployment, and a higher GDP as Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have ushered in, then count me in for some of that Marxism. So after that stale and repetitive attack on Harris fell short, he went back to railing against immigrants and claimed they're using phone apps to get into our country and and in the process, puts his age on full display. They have a phone app so that people can come into our country. These are smart immigrants, I guess, because most people don't have any idea what the hell a phone app is. Most people don't have any idea what a phone app is? It's 2024, Grandpa. Get with the program. By the way, I have no problem with age in politics. Joe Biden, who is older than Trump, has been the most effective president of my lifetime and proves better than anyone that age is just a number. But boy, is Trump out of touch with my generation. To be clear, age is not the issue in this race. It's mental competence, it's policies, and it's personal character. Here is Trump showing his grossly obnoxious personal character by referring to Kamala Harris's speech last night as quote-unquote BS, demonstrating that after 78 years of living, he still has not learned proper manners or common human decency. Then I have to sit there and listen to her bullshit last night. If by BS he means articulating her plans to help grow the economy, protect women's reproductive rights, and lower costs for middle and working class families, then sure, Donald, it was a bunch of BS. Speaking of BS, here is Donald Trump attacking Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, for not being able to speak English, and in his line of attack, he flubs the English. The majority of the school cannot speak English. In Ohio, Springfield. It's schools, not school, Donald. Learn how to speak English, why don't you? But it seems Donald is past the point of obtaining new knowledge, as they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, as he goes on to demonstrate his lack of intelligence by claiming that global warming is not happening. But they think about global warming, which is now called climate change, because global warming doesn't work anymore because it's actually cooling. Even his fossil fuel lobbyists are scratching their heads at that one. It's not cooling, and frankly, the fact that a presidential nominee is denying the existence of global warming should be disqualifying in it of itself. But we are way past the point of Trump making disqualifying statements. In fact, here he is bragging that he fixed the border in 2016, a year in which Barack Obama was still the president. 2016 was like... A great day for this border. 2016, I fixed it. I built hundreds of miles of wall. Putting aside the fact that you didn't assume the Oval Office until 2017, if you had built hundreds of miles of border wall and fixed the border, then why are you still complaining about it, wise guy? Oh, that's right. You didn't build the wall. You didn't get Mexico to pay for anything either. And then you instructed Republicans to block the most comprehensive bipartisan border funding bill in recent U.S. history because you didn't want to give Democrats a win 
during an election year. You are to blame for the problems at the border, and Trump knows he is, which is why he then goes on to call it a, quote, fake border bill that he would go on to sabotage. Then she says about a bill, it was such a bad bill. This bill that she talks about, you know, it's a fake bill. It was put in by the Democrats. That is correct. It was put in by the Democrats. Then Donald Trump told Republicans to block it. And P.S. It was a real bill, Donald. Your spray tan and your health care plan may be fake, but that bill was very real and you sabotaged it. Then to make matters worse for himself, he accidentally goes on to praise Kamala Harris for stopping criminals at the border in one of the most slurry and incoherent monologues of this entire campaign event. Illegal alien who was led into the United States by Kamala and her Lax law. She, they, they, every one of my killer. We had the great. She would, he would have never been able to get in. She stopped every single one of them. What was that, Donald? Apart from the word salad and demented ramblings, all I got was that Kamala Harris stopped all the criminals. Kudos to Kamala for being strong on border security. So, without the border to campaign on, the coup plotter reverted right back to more name calling. This time, calling Kamala Harris. Dumb. She was considered eight weeks ago the worst vice president in history, a very dumb person. The fake news was calling her dumb, stupid. It has already been proven that when Trump attacks Kamala Harris's intelligence and calls her names, it hurts him in polling. Remember when Nikki Haley went on Fox News and begged Donald Trump and J.D. Vance to stop attacking Kamala Harris because it wasn't playing well with female voters? Well, it seems Trump is ignoring that advice and is doubling down on his unpopular and repugnant attacks against her. And here he goes on again to attack Kamala Harris's father in a bizarre rant in which he demands to speak to him. And where is her father? I'd love to speak to him. I'd love to speak to him because nobody's heard from him, but I would like to speak to him. Sorry, Trump, but as a longtime Stanford professor, I'm assuming he doesn't have the interest or time to speak to a traitorous, racist, misogynistic, convicted felon and adjudicated rapist like yourself. He's busy being a proud father and watching his incredible daughter run a highly successful campaign while blazing a path to be become the first female president in American history, which she'll do after she mops the floor with you in 38 days. I think I'll stop my coverage of the angry man's campaign event there because you guys get the picture. He has absolutely no play against Kamala Harris, hence the third grade level insults, the scaremongering, and the abject failure to discuss a single policy of his in a battleground state that he is currently losing in. A tough one to listen to, but remember, his extremism is one of the many reasons why he will be rejected at the ballot box and dealt a second general election loss in a row. Keep digging that grave of yours, Donald. Thank you guys for listening to today's episode of the Gen Z Perspective. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the show and give us a five-star review on Apple because as you can see, the MAGA lunatics have bombarded the podcast with zero-star reviews. I think we're worth a little more than that, but I also think it shows you how terrified they are of our generation. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys next time on the Gen Z Perspective. The Gen Z Perspective's theme song was created and produced by Pokari.